special request over the last couple of days to do another review on some of the Condor packs. And um, I'm going to get through as much of this as I can, get into as many details as I can. So the other bag is the Venture Pack. This is the three day assault pack. And I've added another uh, little sort of EMT, oh, actually it's not an EMT, uh, some other kind of pouch from Condor on it. This is where I keep my laser range finder and my spare batteries and stuff for my Kestrel. So these are like, you know, some of the first things I want out of the bag when I'm going out to do some long range shooting. It's got a nice little pocket on the front here. I carry my uh, bore sighting stuff in there as well as some AAA batteries. This pack is insane in its capacity for the price point. It has compression straps, which I usually leave undone because unless I'm you know, hiking with it or something like that. And I should actually do up these bottom ones. So those are good because the pack has several large compartments on the back of it. It's got a um, set up in here with an organizer and I have a ton of crap in here from the winter. I'll try not to dump it all over the ground. So I carry more spare batteries. You can never have enough batteries. And I carry another extra little Kestrel. That's the, the basic uh, drop from Kestrel. And of course I got it in Tactical Brown to match the pack. Yeah, just kidding. Uh, it's a D3. And I carry an Otis brand ripcord here. This is a 6.5 in case I have, you know, something happen if I'm, say I was out hunting or something like that. And I got something obstructed in the barrel. That's happened to me once back in British Columbia. And so having one of these is a life stopper or life saver. I've got a shotgun cleaning kit and another bunch of little crap like cord and stuff like that. I can, I can rig stuff too if I have to do another caliber. You've got your molly webbing strips all over these packs. There's just, there's tons of it. Uh, I apologize, I might actually have to go and shut my drone off in a second here. I think the battery's running down. You've got another huge compartment on the back here too. That works, that works really well. I sometimes carry binoculars. I carry a spare range finder in here. Uh, like the saying goes, two is, two is one and one is none. And then you have another compartment here where I carry a whole bunch more crap. I carry pens and spare legs for the uh, bipods. I carry uh, this tripod system for the Kestrel. Uh, I just decided I didn't want any more stuff on the outside of the pack. I almost never use that system. I think it's a waste of time uh, depending on the on the Kestrel for, uh, for wind reading. I, I, I'm kind of at the point where I can read the wind by feel a lot of times but then I'll like for for uh, craps and giggles I'll, I'll pull the Kestrel out and check the wind that way but it's not how I make my calls. Getting inside the pack we've got more mesh pockets here hopefully you guys can see that okay I've got a bunch of old MRE bits and pieces shoved in here I've got more batteries I've got uh, an emergency blanket and I've got um, some more of this uh, stretchy mesh camouflage tape from Gear Aid. I think that's, you know, a nice thing to have along, especially if the pack is doing dual purpose. So I, I've got everything from spotting scope to binoculars to multiple sets of electronic earmuffs. Don't use these things without having, uh, having like uh, the, the squishy ones inside your ears too. I don't think these work that well and I actually think I've got some hearing loss from these walkers now. So I'm, I'm pretty pissed about that. I think they're, uh, they're kind of crappy. Uh, got some rounds I was testing. Things I like about these packs that keep me coming back to them. Just gonna unload a ton of crap out of here. I have a windsock that I keep meaning to set up on my extreme long range target. I just never bother to. I'm too paranoid somebody's going to take the target if I do. Because they'll see it easier. But it is Idaho. And honestly you can leave a cell phone lying around here. And generally nobody will touch it. At least where I am. So I like the way they finish their packs inside. They, they do this seam tape over here. 
gives it a nice finished look. I like this material they're using inside, this like thin ripstop stuff. You can actually strap heavier things to the back of the pack if you need to, like a radio or something like that if you happen to be the, the unlucky one who draws the short straw. And you have things like this is my instructor kit too, so that's one of the reasons I have so much crap in here. So you can actually attach a camelback to the inside of this and you have a uh, slot right here too, which, which tears open. It's covered, with, it's covered with a Velcro patch. So what you do is you kind of dig in from the side of that and you can feed the hose through where my finger is there. So that, that patch is good. It keeps all, keeps crap from getting in there. It keeps a little bit of water out. Uh, you'll notice here, hopefully you guys can see that, this is double, double uh, sewn across here. So your main zipper, which is like, um, what is this, a number eight, number 10? It's a, something you typically see on duffel, duffel bags is, um, is really secure. It's, it's a good, robust build. The pack is really heavy duty. It's a heavy Cordura fabric. So that's that's the internals and the pockets. Uh, the pack has an, another thing which I've never used. It's another divider. I mean, you could throw a laptop in here if you wanted to use this huge thing for school or something, but I think it's way too tactical looking. But you do have another option of carrying stuff divided and organized in there. You've got two pockets, one on either side. I carry radios. I carry a uh, bunch of extra mags. Sometimes I'll throw ammo in there, that kind of stuff. It's got this raised padding and uh, valley, like a mountain valley system, for lack of a better term, and that allows some airflow to get through there. It's not quite as breathable as some of the mesh systems, but it is good. And it's got a good, comfortable waist belt. It's got some thin padding in it. It's robust. It's, it's strong. Uh, it works really well for everything from photography to, you know, a weekend backpack trip kind of thing. And I've had this now for about a year. Stitching's all intact. It's doing really well. And it's been used for a bunch of different stuff. From my photography uh, hobby to coming out here and shooting. It's been on many, many, many trips in the back of the truck with the dogs, and it's doing really well. Uh, it's It's been a good little pack. So recently I picked up another one for school. So this is the pack that I got for school. I It's called the Venture Pack, and it's also from Condor. And it's a, it's been an impressive little pack. It's similar to the the Solveig pack that I uh, that I what was it a couple of years ago now I, like almost three years ago I that I did a review on it was one of my first reviews if you want to go and look back on that so I carry like a padlock for a bike and stuff like that in here uh, it's got an amazing amount of organization it's got all this stuff in here. I carry, I've got everything from dog spray to a knife to a flashlight. I mean, you could call this an everyday go kit, but this is actually my school, my school bag now. You've got another pocket in here. You've got a mesh keeper pocket. You've got mesh keep, a mesh keeper pocket on the bottom. You've got a radio slot. You've got another little keeper pocket in here too. You just have so many options for organizing this bag. You have a, a system here where you could carry like a bike helmet or whatever. Uh, I think this is a good pocket if you want to carry like uh, a holster. You want to carry like throw your pistol in there and and have this for an everyday carry pack. I mean it's a great option for that. I'll just give you an idea. There's my Glock 43 and that's how it fits in there. And because it has this velcro patch in here, I believe that they intended that to be for a, a holster that would velcro in there as well. So moving on up the lid, you have another little organizer pocket. I carry a GoPro with me sometimes, uh, catching B-roll footage and stuff. And then you have your main compartment. And this is another one of these awesome uh, compartments actually. So then you have another mesh pocket in here. You have two mesh pockets. 
on the lid and then you have a laptop sleeve. So I've been riding my bike to school, my motorbike sometimes, and this is actually really, really comfortable to wear. It keeps the weight close to your body and yet, you know, if I do want to use this pack and I want to go out for a hike or something like that, I'm not worried it's going to tear apart like your typical school bag type thing. You've got a drain hole here, you've got attachment points so you could put something like a sleeping roll or something like that. With my bivy pack or bivy setup with a one pound sleeping bag, one pound thermarest and a one pound uh, bivy bag, easily all of that stuff could fit in there. That whole unit is like this big and I'd have room for food and all sorts of uh, goodies for a camping trip. The pack also has the same sort of like behind the back uh, carry slot here. And what this is actually intended for on this one is so that you can throw a camel back in here. So you have an insulated pack or pad on the front of it here and it's insulated here so it's gonna keep your water cold. You could carry a three liter in here if you really wanted to. And then it has the same Velcro type opening on the top where you can feed the hose through. You've got your loops to carry, to lock your Camelback bag in there. I keep saying Camelback, but really any water bladder. I'm just old school. I actually had one of the original Camelbacks, so I'm dating myself. So that's the two packs that I'm using right now. There's nothing wrong with that zipper. It just ships like that. Uh, they've been really impressive. My Solveig pack, like I mentioned at the, the beginning, this it, it opens like this too. It was too small for what I was doing. It's about 50% smaller, or a third smaller than this pack is. Um, so it's about this tall, and it's a little narrower, not as deep. What I did by accident was I pulled the zipper, and pulled the zipper, I pulled the actual keeper apart, and opened it, and... I don't know, I wasn't listening to my gut, I was just being kind of dumb and I was in a rush, so I wrecked it that way. What I ended up doing was I got a zipper repair kit from Gear Aid out of Bellingham, and I fixed the zipper, and now my son's using that pack. Uh, that's his emergency go bag kind of thing. I prefer this pack over the Solveig now, just because of the size. I like the, attach, the attached uh, back panel here, like this slot type thing. That's actually kind of handy and there's sometimes where you just want to have like an extra jacket or something easy to get at. If somebody's hiking behind you they can just reach in grab it that kind of thing and I like the hidden carry pocket in here as well and it's something that not nobody's going to notice. Expect that your pack's going to last a very very long time. Like I said my Condor Sol Solvig it was getting out taken out two or three times a week and it just a lot of times just thrown around in the truck and stuff and with as loaded as it was it was it was a little I'd say I pushed the pack pretty good. It's still going at three years. It's had the one repair. And so I gotta say, I would still go back and buy that pack again. I think they have a new Solveig pack out, which looks really good too. And I believe they permanently attached the back panel like they did on this Venture pack. So I hope you, you Canadian uh, followers noticed. I still got my Canadian patch on there. I'm still can. Canadian. I, I love Canada. I love the US. I think they're both amazing countries. I'm, I'm sad to see how Canada has gone with this current uh, dictatorship that's that's running the country right now. I feel bad for you guys. I hope that, you know, we can get the message out there that Canada deserves better.